might be hard to believe, but upper chest used to be one of my worst body parts. So when I got shredded and many were saying, Alex, your split looks like Franco Colombo's, I was really happy because for years, it wasn't that way. I struggled to progress on specific movements, mainly being inclines and overhead presses, both of which I've gone very strong at. So there's never any excuses. You see me do a 315, 30 degree barbell press and a 242 anterior delt press. So how do I overcome the odds? And what was my biggest Achilles heel? Well, in this case, it was regarding the upper body. I have hypermobile elbows. They extend far beyond normal range of motion, which not only gives elbow pain, which wasn't a problem for these movements, but the issue was distorting the movement patterns. What I mean is, whenever I would try to bias my upper chest, press upwards in the direction where the fibers follow, my elbow would hyperextend in front of the body, thereby causing a larger moment arm, worsening my leverages and making it more middle to lower chest and even triceps, you can argue. And the same was with the OHP. So it took a lot of intentional form correction to finally press backwards, but it's freaking hard when that's not what your elbows naturally want to do. You are literally fighting yourself. Like, you know how the West side is used to say you want to press in a straight vertical line. That's precisely what my elbows wanted to do on anything that was more vertical. That's why I gravitated towards flat. And so doing that for years, you know, I had massive pecs, but literally no shelf on top. And then when I started doing inclines, <sighs> big mistake, stuck to the lowest angles only 15 degrees. I didn't even have an adjustable bench. So I would take my flat bench, put on top of a plyometric box being 12 inches high in my inclines like that. And I wondered why it wasn't growing. Well, not only was I arching like a madman, but the angle itself wasn't steep enough. And this is what I see in so many of you. You understand that with minimal arching, 45 degrees can potentially be too much. 30 degrees is really the ultimate sweet spot, but rather than embracing a slight adjustment, you go to the opposite extreme, thereby allowing you to lift over 50 pounds more. Really, not much different compared to your flat. And in reality, that's what we see when guys change the angle. Most people flat bench are actually doing a decline. Those who do a slight incline are doing a flat. And those who do the higher inclines are coincidentally down to that optimal angle, which they should have been in to begin with had they not done the arch. But anyway, I'm not trying to confuse you here. I'm just saying, make sure you're actually doing an incline press. Otherwise, you're gonna be one of those guys, and this is many elite powerlifters who are super strong at anything flat. But the moment you raise, the moment you get close to the vertical, you're weak as <laughs> I'm saying it's entirely possible to have a 405 bench and 315 incline. What, that's excessive? You're making this up? No, that's what I did. That said, this ratio was still enough to correct my imbalance given the absolute low. It's still respectable, but I'm just saying, if I would've done things right years ago, my gains would've been even better. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that my chest really improved in the last year and a half or so. And that's because I started going to the gym again and using machines, but not all the machines. Most of them felt terrible. Mostly shoulders, didn't get a good mind-muscle connection. The one thing that did it for me, and it kind of goes back to the initial problem I highlighted, was the incline Smith machine bench press. And I'll tell you why. For one, I have a Bells of Steel hydro rack with a beautiful barbell, a heavy duty adjustable bench, perfect safety adjustment and J hooks. And I'm always training in that room, accumulating PR. So when I go to the gym, you best believe I'm not gonna use some old power rack from 15 years ago that doesn't have the proper adjustment so I can do free weight exercise. Like, no, I'd rather use a Smith machine. And then the other issue is the incline benches that are already set tend to be way too high, between 45 and 60 degrees. And if you don't believe me, use one of those leveling apps, put it on the bench, see what that angle is. I'm telling you, it's not 30. And this is why a lot of you guys were never able to feel your upper chest. So I'm not gonna drag a bench from one side of the gym all the way to the power rack. Like, I can do that at home, thank you very much. And the Smith, I have safety built into it. If I fail, I just adjust those wrists. And then the other thing is, it gives maximum stability. I can fully grind without having any limiting factors. Motor unit recruitment is highest, and that is probably what advanced lifters need the most. So I treat this as my primary mass builder, often doing it as the first exercise. Or I could invert it. I can start with an incline dumbbell press and hit the incline Smith right after. But the point is, I never did incline barbell press at the gym always the smith and the other thing is 
it allowed me to press in a straight vertical line that's unnatural for most people, but was more natural for me given my fucked up hypermobile elbows. And by doing that exercise for months, literally every time I went to do a push session or upper body session, it actually started to correct the movement pattern of my barbell incline pressing. So what I found is when I would alternate back and forth, I was starting to press more like a smith. Even though you can't fully replicate it, it taught me to move backwards. And then it got me thinking about the interview that I did with Pete Kacharian. He was telling me that the secret to his upper chest development was doing incline ball pressing to the clavicle. And interestingly, that's the setup that you naturally have on the incline smith. So I put two and two together and realized that's one of the missing links in establishing the correct elbow positioning and making the exercise even more biased for the upper chest because there is no converging effect on an incline barbell or smith press, right? You're really going for that deep position. And the thing is, when you bring it to the clavicle, you're still lined up and it rotates. So yeah, you're not moving like this, but in the bottom position, you're getting the benefits. And this is a lengthened position exercise to begin with. So what you're getting is a maximum range of motion, fully stretching the upper chest. And for the first time, like, I feel the zone more than ever before. Like when I'm at home now, I'm bringing it all the way down and that elbow gets deep, but it prevents me from doing that power lift to form where I'm bringing it down on the sternum and then back. So this is the correct way to press for upper chest. And it's also the way you press on an OHP. Like the more vertical you get, you can't be mimicking your flat angles. Obviously when you go back to those, I don't want you then bringing the bar high up, you know, separate the two movements. But all this to say guys, the Smith machine, Given its maximum stability and the fact that it's just convenient to set up and it's the only thing that realistically works in a commercial gym for safety and just getting the most efficient setup, it taught me how to actually work different chess. And for that, I'm very grateful. So that's been the winning combination. One time a week at home, incline bubble press, could be 30 or 45 degrees just to change up the stimulus. And at the gym, always 30 degrees off the Smith, giving you the perfect position, maximum straining, you can't go wrong if your goal is hypertrophy. It's a simple solution that requires dropping your ego and trying to maximize your range of motion and difficulty of the exercise, which comes by bringing the bar to the correct position higher up on the clavicle, thereby getting a maximum arm bend and stretch and the adjustable bench not being at 15 to 20 degrees. So if you're even working out at home, get an adjustable bench, stop being a flat purist. You're gonna regret it years down the road when you have a glaring weakness between you two. Then you say, oh, well, it's because natties can't have big upper chest. Nonsense. You could develop this region with the correct exercises. So that's it. This will work for me. A couple of tweaks made all the difference. Now I want to know what you think about incline pressing and the Smith Machine variant.